sitting out there this afternoon. The reason I say that is because basically it takes two players, the quarterback and the receiver, to make that go. But if you're going to run with the football, seven or eight players have to execute well to be successful. Now, while we've been away there, there have been some changes. New interim head coach for the Seattle Seahawks, Mike McCormick. And when he was named interim head coach on October the 13th, he immediately announced that his quarterback would be Jim Zorn. So he'll be going with a scrambling veteran today. Now, Denver also has made a decision on their quarterback. Yeah, and it's controversial here in Denver. Morton is going to start a quarterback over Steve DeBerg, although DeBerg did play very well in preseason and the first two games. The reason, Morton has not only the experience, but the leadership ability that is so necessary when you've only had a couple of days of practice. And it's better to start Morton and bring DeBerg in than vice versa. Denver won the toss. They will be receiving. So the Seahawks will be kicking off. And we're ready to restart the National Football League season. In reality, this is game three. Norm Johnson kicking off. Wade Manning downing the ball in the end zone for the touchback. So we'll bring it out to the 20-yard line. And that's where we will start. Denver Broncos in offense going with Craig Morton, the quarterback, 39 years of age in his 18th year, with Preston and Peros, the two running backs. Upchurch, Watson, and Odoms are the receivers. Riley Odoms, a great tight end. Upchurch is an excellent, excellent receiver. Minor, Glassick, Ryan Studdard, and Lanier, the offensive line. Denver at their own 20 yard line. First down. Denver with about 40% of the offense that they would normally have in at this time as Dave Preston gets the call. Tuiasa Sopo and Jeff Bryant are there for the stop. Now let's look at the Seahawks defense. Green, Hardy, Tuiasa Sopo, and Jeff Bryant, the front four. They'll go with three linebackers, Schultz, Jackson, and Butler. And a very active secondary, Simpson, Brown, Easley, and Harris. Second down and nine. Gerald Wilhite comes in as Preston comes out of the backfield. We'll see the running backs used primarily, uh, not primarily, they'll be used primarily as running backs, but also as a messenger service as Wilhite gets the call to the 23, has a couple. So it'll be third down and six as Robert Hardy gets the call. Charlie, I said, look for passing right away. And what does Morton do the first two plays is try to keep the ball on the ground. They want to establish a running game. They would like to do that to take a lot of the heat off of the passer. What you don't want to get into is a, a second 10 or a third 10 situation all of the time and have to throw the football. They spot it at the 22 yard line. So it is third down and eight now from the shotgun. Morton, not too mobile, has a lot of time, should have been intercepted. 22, Dave Brown, right in his hands. He couldn't hold on to it. That would have been six points for Seattle. He hit it right in his chest. He read the play exceptionally well. Morton is back to throw. He does get a little pressure and has to get rid of the ball, but 22 right there. Dave Brown could have had an interception, and they could have had a touchdown. Morton with three interceptions on the year. Fourth down, Luke Prestridge to kick. catch is called for and taken by Paul Johns back at the 22 yard line a 50 yard kick by Prestridge leading the NFL in kicking with a 49.4 yard average now offensively for Seattle in the backfield we mentioned Jim Zorn Sherman Smith and David Hughes will also be there the receivers Johns Largent and Tice and the offensive line as you look at it is the offensive line that the Seahawks had at the end of last year with a change of craft. So they had made some changes earlier this year, but they have gone back to their old offensive line. Seattle, first play on offense from their own 21-yard line, and Sherman Smith is the ball carrier. So Seattle is, uh, 
in a way like Denver trying to establish the running game seems to be the old adage. Now let's look at the defense very quickly. For the Denver Broncos, they will go as they always do with a 3-4. And we'll see the normal changes. Javis, Carter, and Jones, the front three. With the four linebackers, Ryan, Evans, Gratishar, and Jackson. Right, Kyle, Smith, and Harden. Another good secondary. Gain of a yard, second down, and nine. Ball game just underway, no score. The second back through is Sherman Smith. And he is stopped by Don Latimer, who is now the nose tackle, and Randy Grantishar. Seattle last in the AFC in rushing, averaging only 60 yards a game. One thing Seattle does not want to do with that very active Denver defense is get into a third and passing situation all the time. Charlie, you notice where they went the first two plays? Right at the left linebacker, outside linebacker, number 50, Jim Ryan. I look for them to, to really test this young linebacker. He's making a, a starting assignment for the first time in his career. Greg Boyd checks into the defense. Third down and six. Seattle to throw. Backs are split. That's a passing formation. They show a little motion. Dorn has some pressure. It is wobbly. Knocked away. A flag is down. Randy Granishire was there for the defense. Byron Walker, the intended receiver. If it's pass interference, of course, the automatic first down. That'll be the call. So Seattle will have the first down at the spot of the foul. Number 53 defense. First down. Let's take another look. Jim Zorn is trying to go underneath. He's working on the linebackers, waiting for his, his backs and his uh, receivers actually to come underneath. 89 was the intended receiver. Walker, number 89, but I don't think there's any question whatsoever. Number 53, Randy Gratishar was holding on that play. So it's a first down Seattle, first first down of the ball game. Sherman Smith goes in motion far side, sets up as a wide receiver. We saw you motion with Largent coming near side. Zorn to Largent, good reception, a flag is down. Largent down the sidelines, out of bounds, around the 47-yard line. But we'll go back to check the marker. A pickup of 18 yards if it stands. I know that defensively, uh, Denver might be saying there was a pick play out there. That's exactly what it was. I don't know if that's a call or not. That'll be the call. Offensive pass interference. We'll bring it back. Jerry Seaman, the referee, a look at the officials. We had a chance to visit with him before the ball game. We wanted to go over the rule changes because it's been two months for us also. Mike McCormick, the interim head coach of the Seattle Seahawks. Defensively for Denver, they're not going to be... Number 85, offense. Pass interference on Paul John. They were calling the pick play. That's what happened. Defensively for Denver, they're not going to get into too many coverages, and I think you can see why with all the motion and the, the changing of personnel in that offensive backfield, you can't get into too many different types of coverages. First down and 20. On the draw, excellent fake by Zorn, giving on the delayed draw to Sherman Smith, and he picks up 10 yards to the 30. It'll be second down and 10 as Larry Evans makes the tackle. Good fake. Well, I'll tell you, Barney Chavis, number 79, the defensive left end, thought that Zorn still had the ball. Excellent fake by number 10, Zorn. Here he is, putting it way and around to Sherman Smith, and you can see 75 Jones, and there goes Chavis going after the quarterback, but he didn't have the ball. Number 47, Sherman Smith did. Picked up a good game. It's always fun to watch the Seahawks in action. They're going to have a flare. Smith in motion. Largent now in motion. Zorn to throw. Looks for a screen, and he throws it away. David Hughes was hiding behind the screen, but he had too much pressure. He was just going to call the end of the, to the end of that play. He threw the ball away. Latimer, number 72, was out there. And if he had tried to throw it to his offensive back, it could have been intercepted. So he wisely just threw the football away. Last year, Zorn had only nine interceptions in 397 attempts, second to Ken Anderson in the NFL. One thing you don't want to do in any ball game, and I think particularly here this afternoon, is give up the football. If somebody is going to earn something offensively, make them work for it because they haven't had that much time to work out offensively, and they're going to be rusty. They're down in 10, 30-yard line, no score. We're about four minutes into the ball game. Five on the pattern. Over the middle. 
on target. First down. Steve Largen and Zorn thrilled him. A big of a 12 in the first down. And he did an excellent job of throwing it between the two linebackers. Ryan and Gratishar. Good protection. Zorn going back in the pocket. Stays in the pocket. You can see the offensive lineman providing good vision for him. And he threw it right between 53 Gratishar. You see there and number 50 Ryan. And remember, he was coming back from a first and 20 following that offensive pass interference on the pick play. Now, Largen is trying to catch his breath. We'll talk about that. The altitude here could well be a factor in the second half. Walker in motion. The give inside. Sherman Smith getting the call from the 43 to the 46. A gain of three, second down seven. Reuben Carter with the tackle. The altitude here is always a problem for the visiting team, even when you're in excellent shape, as you know. Oh, yes, it is. Well, I've played here many times, particularly in the fourth quarter. The receivers, the defensive backs who have to do a lot of moving, a lot of running, they're definitely going to feel it in the fourth quarter. And there is no way that the Seahawks they may be, be in it. great shape. They may be feeling it right now. Draw to the second back through Sherman Smith to the 50 yard line to pick up a four it'll be third down and three as Jim Ryan the linebacker brings him down Sherman Smith uh, had an injury a couple of years ago didn't have the year last year that he'd hoped to but he's been playing extremely well this year at least in the first two ball games that he played in here in the third one also and you can see the leg drive that he has looks like he's fully recovered from the uh, from the knee problem that he had he's coming out for a breather the only ball carrier on the ground this far for the Seahawks. Five carries for 20 yards. Ball at the 50-yard line. No score. Third down and three. And the Seahawks take a timeout. As you know, three timeouts allowed in each half for each team. And right now, they feel they have a little offense going. Maybe they're getting a little tired. Maybe that out. They didn't, simply do not want to make a mistake right well, now. Well, Jim Zorn took a look at something. He probably had a formation call that... He didn't want to use, so he wisely took a timeout. All right, we'll be back to Mile High Stadium in just a moment. Right now, we have nine minutes left to go first quarter with no score. National Football League. Today's game is brought to you by the new Chrysler Corporation, quality engineered to be the best. By Budweiser Light with a clean, distinctive taste worthy of the king of beers. And by the U.S. Army, a place to be all you can be. All right, we go back to action with nine minutes left to play in the first quarter. We have no score between the Seattle Seahawks and the Denver Broncos. Seattle with the football at the 50-yard line. Third down and three. Denver took the opening kickoff, downed it in the end zone, were unable to move. A 50-yard punt by Luke Prestridge. And since then, the Seahawks have battled their way from their own 21-yard line out to the 50. Charlie, I think you can see the field has not suffered. The field is in excellent condition this afternoon. So that can't be an excuse for either side. Beautiful day for football. Walker and Johns, the wide receivers, third down and three. Sweep right side, the Otis Brown cuts back, and he'll pick up the first down. His momentum will carry him to about the 46 yard line of Denver. He needed three, and he got four. And now, Lynn, let's check the scores around the league. All right. It's fourth quarter action. Pittsburgh leading Houston 17 to 10. A final. Cincinnati defeating Philadelphia 18 to 14. Good ball game. Another final. Dallas defeating Tampa Bay 14 to 9. Another final. Cleveland over New England 10-7. The Jets, <laughs> wow, 37 to nothing over Baltimore. Miami a final nine to seven in a very important ball game nine to seven over Buffalo Atlanta final thirty four to seventeen over the Rams fourth quarter Detroit Chicago tied seventeen all another final the Packers defeating Minnesota twenty six to seven packs three and oh another final the Saints defeated the Chiefs twenty seven to seventeen. So that updates what has happened today. Here it is, no scores. Seattle at the Denver 46-yard line, first down. 
Largen back in as a wide receiver. A fake to the second back. Deep far side. Has a man open and he hits him. That is Paul John. At the 26-yard line, a pickup of 20 and a first down. Lewis Wright was the defender. Fourth first down in this drive for the Seattle Seahawks. Well, I guess if folks are wondering why Jim Zorn is a quarterback, you're finding out why. Great pass protection by the offensive line. He's faking to his backs, steps up, wide open. Johns is wide open on the sidelines for a big game. And now they're getting in the field goal range. Denver, 26-yard line, first down. David Hughes. We'll give him three to the 23. So it'll be second down and seven as Jim Ryan, the linebacker, is the man who stopped it. You mentioned as we were looking at the scores, an important ballgame with a shortened season. And now in each conference, eight of the 14 teams making the playoffs. In reality, every game is a crucial game. It certainly is. And, and especially, I think, for Seattle, they are 0 and 2. Yes. But they feel that they win some ball games. They're back in the hunt. They're back in the race. Denver's record, one and one. Second down, seven. No score. 6.48. First quarter. A mix-up in the backfield. Zorn's in trouble. He'll scramble and then just decide to wrap it over the 31-yard line. He'll lose eight yards on the play. Ruland Jones got it. He was, a loss of eight. he was looking to give the ball to number 30, Theotis uh, Brown, but Theotis slipped, and Zorn decided to go that way himself, but the blocking was not there. And that's what he's talking about. Here, you see 30 is slipping right there, Theodis Brown. I just got through saying the field was in excellent condition. Theodis is going to dispute that. Zorn is looking for a way out, but there is none. Number 75, Ruland Jones, is there, makes a stop, drives him back. Now they're looking at third and long situation. Seattle has had the football for six and a half minutes. Third down, 15. They are out of field goal range now. Screen, it's there. Theodis Brown. To the 20 yard line back in field goal range pickup of 11 it'll be fourth down and four and the field goal team will come aboard Tom Jackson making the last tackle for the Broncos and Norm Johnson will come in with a field goal attempt this will be his first field goal attempt he is a rookie free agent not only his first regular season field goal attempt his first NFL field goal attempt Zorn will be holding at the 28 yard line an attempt of 38 yards Seattle is known to fake the field goal they'll go with it here and it is no go so Johnson misses from 38 yards Norm Johnson the rookie from UCLA well, I think you can watch him, and he's going to tell you what happened on the kick, whether it was good or not. He's 0 for 1. Seattle held the ball 8 minutes and 3 seconds with nothing to show for it on the scoreboard. So Denver has the ball at the 20-yard line, second time on offense. First time in offense, they ran three plays, almost had an interception, and they punted. Up church in motion, now he reverses it. Morton to throw. And he is sacked. Fumble. And fumble the ball. It is picked up by a Bronco. Tom Glassick. Tom Glassick, the offensive guard, picked it up. Third time this year that Morton has been sacked. First time in the ball game. Manu Tuiasasopo is the man who got it. And he really hit him hard. Morton did get up. He had a lot of motion going on. Morton looking to his right does not see Tuiasa Sopo, oh. but he feels him, I assure you that. It's a good thing that that young quarterback's in great shape, Charlie, to take those kind of shots. Manu 6'3", 252 pounds, a full head of steam. Second and 18. Mix up in the backfield on the handoff. Morton was looking for Will Hyde on one side. He came on the other side. Jeff Bryant makes the tackle at about the 15. Now, Dennis Smith, number 49, the strong safety for the Broncos, really took a shot the last time he was in on defense. They've been working on him on the sideline. The report is we think something is wrong with his eye. We'll stay on top of that story. 
Official spotted at the 14 yard line, so it's third down and 16. I would suggest a quick kick. I, they have done absolutely nothing offensively so far in this first quarter. 357 remaining. Third down and 16, 14 yard line, Denver in their own territory. Morton to throw. Walks outside, scrambles a little, throws. It is tipped, it is incomplete. Visually, that will give you an idea, though, that Craig Morton just does not have maneuverability. He does not have the maneuverability. That was an outlet to a man he was going to. Watson is his primary receiver. Steve Watson, number 81, who had a tremendous year a year ago, coming across the middle. There's Riley Odoms there, gets a hand up. But look at all of the defense. I mean, that was really a risky thing to do for Craig Morton. I counted six white shirts around the football when it came down. Morton did display a little bit of agility to get away from Gregory. They're lucky it wasn't intercepted. That's two times they could have been intercepted. Prestridge to kick. His first kick went 50 yards. Paul Johns feels it at the 47-yard line. And he has a return of about 12 yards on the play. The punt covered 40 yards. We've got a timeout. We have no score between Seattle and Denver. We'll be back in a moment to Mile High Stadium. Of Denver Broncos. Is that Steve DeBerg with him, I believe? That's Steve DeBerg yeah, right Steve there, DeBerg I believe. There. He's warming yeah. up on the sidelines. The unbearded one. Yes. Morton now has a beard. Anticipating perhaps a cold winter in the Colorado <laughs> area. No scores. Seattle first down Denver 43 yard line. Zorn since four on the pattern has Largent and he misses it. Largent had a little opening between defenders. Number 31 Mike Hart. They say this guy was a hitter and now I believe them because he really took a shot at Steve Largent. You're going to see it right here. That's what happens when you're going in between zones and that ball is in there and you're trying to pinpoint a pass. If it isn't exactly on target, that receiver is going to take a lot of punishment. Lar Largen goes out and Walker comes in replacing him. After a receiver takes a shot like that, when he comes back to the huddle, does he ever mention anything to you about it? <laughs> like, don't send me on that pattern anymore? I don't want to run that pattern anymore. <laughs> Second and ten. Smith. No game. J.T. Thomas made the tackle. Now Thomas has replaced Dennis Smith at strong safety for the Denver Broncos. Smith, as you saw a moment ago on the sideline when they were working on it. It's pretty hard to fool J.T. Thomas. He's been around long enough to know what's going on out there offensively. J.T. from Florida State in his ninth year in the NFL. Roger Carr, number 87, the great wide receiver in his ninth year from Louisiana Tech. And the ball to Morcos now with Seattle is in the ball game. And I, <laughs> they'll get his car will get the attention of the defense. Third down and ten. Zorn the car. He's got it. 25 yard line. 21 yard line. Pick up a 22 yards and a first down. And we've got him twice. Number 22, Aaron Kyle, was completely turned around by Roger Carr. He thought he was going deep. Watch the move here. He comes back to the sideline. The ball is thrown beautifully. Nowhere in sight is number 22, Aaron Kyle, until he comes up and makes the, the stop. I'm surprised Roger Carr didn't jump out of bounds, Charlie. But here it is once again. Zorn coming back. Comes up. Fires the ball right on target. Roger Carr, number 87 making the catch. You see how far away the defensive back is. He was completely turned around. Zorn Great. is four for six, 66 yards. Excuse me. David Hughes gets a call on a straight shot. Brad is and Jackson with the tackle. The point that I'm making about Roger Carr and his great speed, when you have that great speed, the defensive backs are going to give you some respect. So when, it, when you make a good move that makes it look like you're going to go deep, they're going to take off. That's what happened on that last play that Carr caught. The defensive back thought he was going deep. Carr stopped, came back to the sidelines, picked up 22 yards. Back and field goal range. Second down and seven at the 18-yard line. Jim Zorn. He does move the offense. David Hughes slips. 
still manages to pick up a couple of the yards that he would have lost, but he loses one of the 19, if all of that makes any sense. He would have lost three or lost only one. Number 56, Larry Evans, a linebacker, making the stop. I'm surprised, really, that uh, Seattle is going with different directions, starting one way and coming back the other. When you haven't had the, the time to work out on these plays, generally it takes a while to perfect those type of plays. Seattle 3 of 4 on third down conversions. This is third down and 8. Little play action. Screen right side. Theodis Brown. Close to the first down. Maybe a yard short. Good blocking out in front. Steve August number 76. The offensive right tackle. And number 86 Mike Tice. They were both out in front. You're going to see 76 is in your picture now. As Theodis Brown comes up with the football. And you can see that 76 and 86 just wiping out the defensive back. A wide shot taking a look at it. Zorn getting the ball out to the back. And now you can see the two men out there, 76 and 86, taking somebody up into the nickel seats. Seattle has had the football 11 minutes and 40 seconds of the first quarter. We have 23 seconds left in the period. Fourth down and one. The Otis Brown, the defense hold. And Steve DeBerg will be the quarterback for the Denver Broncos. We've got a timeout. As the fans welcome DeBerg to the huddle. We'll be back in a moment. We have no score. Al High Stadium, it is cold for me. Lynn is <laughs> used to the cold weather. We've got nine seconds left to go in the first quarter. Lynn? Well, I'll tell you, if DeBerg is back in the ball game, and I think we mentioned at the top of the show that Dan Reeves probably felt that if he started Morton and Morton didn't move the ball club, DeBerg could add a spark to the offense because he has a great deal more mobil mobility. Then Craig Morton. Denver from their own 13 yard line with no score. What should be the last play of the first quarter. He gives off to the second back through Dave Preston. Preston to about the 17. He'll pick up four. It'll be second down and six. Total yardage first quarter prior to that play was Seattle 91 yards and Denver zero. We have come to the end of the first quarter. We have no score. We'll be back in a moment. Dennis Smith the starting strong safety for the Broncos. He is being held out of play. They're going to check him at halftime for a possible concussion. He's been replaced defensively by J.T. Thomas. But right now the Bronco offense is on the field with Steve Berg, Steve DeBerg the quarterback replacing Craig Morton who started. Total yardage Seahawks 91 and the Broncos zero first quarter. Second down and six Denver up church in motion. Up church on the reverse. Up church loses yard. Dave Brown had an excellent play by Dave Brown, the quarterback. He was not fooled. He did not move across the field. He sat there and waited. Take a look right now that pitching the ball out to the halfback, Peros, and he gives it to Rick Upchurch. Rick has absolutely no place to go. A good open field tackle by number 22, Brown. Loss of eight yards. It'll be third down and 14. Celebrating. You said there were zero yards when the quarter ended. They lost yardage there. They're minus now. Minus eight yards. We have an official's timeout. Second time that we've had an official's timeout, and this is the uh, the microphone, which is so valuable, not only uh, to the television viewers, but also to the people in the stands of explaining the penalties when flags go down and had a little problem with it, so they're working on it. See Mike McCormick. Seattle's a new head football coach from Kansas City, Missouri. Oh. I played with Mike. No, I didn't play. He played. I watched him when I was with the Cleveland Browns. <laughs> great competitor. There's another great competitor, Dan Reeves, head yeah. coach of the Denver Broncos. 
He needs to get his offense moving. They are minus yardage. Jimmy Winder in as a running back for the Broncos. Third down and 14. Look for DeBerg to throw, obviously. Both backs in the block. A blitz is on. A delayed screen. And a good defensive play. Pass complete to Winder. But Bruce Schultz drops him for a loss of four. Good defensive heads up play. Defense for Seattle is really playing outstanding football. It was supposed to be the Denver defense that was going to dominate this game, but so far it's been the Seattle defense. They read that play perfectly. They were looking for either a draw or a screen, which is a very safe pass to throw down there. But it almost wasn't a safe pass because the linebacker and a defensive lineman happened to be out in the area where he threw the football. All right, Luke Prestridge will be kicking. He sets up right at the back edge of the end zone. Paul John set for the return. He gets it off under pressure. It's a great kick. Johns feels it at the 40-yard line, bounces it once, picks it up at the 35, and has dropped to the 35-yard line. A tremendous punt by Luke Preston. 55 yards. Nathan Poole on the special team got him. A return of minus four yards. And what a turnaround that is because the Seahawks looked as if they would have excellent field position. There's a marker dropped on the field and a conference being held. The penalty against the Seahawks. I guess you could say the offense so far for Denver has been their punter, Prestridge. He has saved the day. Against San Francisco, he had a 76 yard. Number 37 during the return. Longest in the conference. Now let's take another look. Trying to make the reception, he bobbles the ball around. He's fortunate a good bounce came to him, and it bounced right back up in his hands. But for the Seahawks, they're deep in their own territory. We'll be back in just a moment. Well, these signs say it all. I say one thing the fans in Denver are probably as great of fans as any, any uh, city in the National Football League. Their 91st consecutive sellout, the longest streak in the AFC. Zorn to throw, far side. He underthrows Johns, but he comes back and makes the catch and may have the first down. Aaron Kyle is the man that they're picking on. They're staying away from. Lewis Wright on the other side. Well, it's a pretty good reason why they stay away from Lewis Wright. He's considered one of the top two or three defensive backs in the National Football League. An outstanding athlete. It is a first down, just outside the 34 yard line. You know, taking a look at the statistics so far, it's fortunate for Denver they're not behind. Seattle is averaging 5.7 yards per carry, Denver 0.7 per play. First down Seattle. Scoreless ball game. Walker in motion. Play action. Smith and incomplete. So it'll be second down and ten. Report on Sammy Winder of the Broncos. A slight hamstring. He may not be back. This is uh, the type of injury more than any other that we were concerned that we would see today. Yes, I think when you mentioned the Dennis Smith. Uh, Possibly has a, a concussion. They're going to to examine him at halftime. Uh, that can happen whether you're in shape or not. But the problems they were concerned about are muscle pulls and things of that nature. Winder apparently has got a little problem right now. Seattle six first downs. Denver has not picked up a first down. Here's the draw. Sherman Smith. Second time they have run the inside out draw. Picks up three to the 37. So it'll be third down and seven. Charlie Bob Swenson is not playing the great linebacker for the Denver Broncos. He's out on a contract dispute. So in his place is number 50 Jim Ryan and teams are going to that area. And naturally so if you find somebody who hasn't been there that hasn't had the experience of a Swenson you're going to test him. And most of the running attack so far this afternoon by Seattle has been in number 50 Jim Ryan's direction. Third down and seven. Roger Carr in as a wide receiver near side. 
Pass goes away from him, and it is incomplete. David Hughes went up for it, could not pull it down. Very catchable football. It's a good throw by Zorn. I know he's not happy with the throw. That ball could have very easily have been caught by Hughes. So we'll see Jeff West. First time that he has kicked. Fourth down and seven. And Rick Upchurch sets up shop at the 17 yard line. A 67 yard punt return for a touchdown against San Francisco, the NFL's all time leading punt returner. Seven career touchdowns. The next one would tie the record, but it won't be this one. Fair catch. And he hands it to a Seahawk who was down very quickly. That was Ken McAllister. We've got a timeout. The punt covered 39 yards. We're still scoreless at Mile High Stadium. Back in a moment. Mile High Stadium, Denver, no score between the Seahawks and the Broncos. Denver has the ball at their own 24 yard line first down. Broncos have not picked up a first down in the first half. 11 and a half minutes left to go in the second period. Steve DeBerg has protection over the middle. Pass is complete. First down, Rick Perros to the 40 yard line. First first down of the ball game. A pickup of 16 yards. John Harris with the tackle. Here's Lynn Dawson. Well, it was just a little pass over the line of scrimmage, letting the linebackers get some depth. You can see 24 Perils finding his way, finding the open spot, stops where it's open. The ball is delivered to him by DeBerg, and he picks up a first down. you got to pick up the first one before he can pick up the rest, Charlie. It's been a long time coming with almost uh, less than 11 minutes remaining in this ball game, or half. Will Hyde and Gerald picks up about three maybe four yards before Robert Hardy makes the tackle at the 44 yard line it'll be second down and six. Dave Preston checks back into the offense that is Steve Largent we have a report he is suffering from a possible concussion will be held out the rest of the first half and they'll check him at halftime. Yeah, I think if you recall that shot that he took I think it was by Mike Hart in yes. the first quarter it was uh, the result. And I mentioned before the the game that the enthusiasm and the desire was going to be there. Watson is open. Knocked away. Good defensive play. Steve Watson was open deep over the middle. Michael Jackson got a hand up the linebacker dropping back. Good pass protection for Steve DeBerg getting back in the pocket. Morton had a lot of pressure in the first quarter when he was in there. But Watson was open, as you can see, but you see the hand go up. Number 55, Michael Jackson, reacts to the ball, knocks it away, and prevents a big game. Now they're going to get him back, and pretty soon, Charlie, they're going to throw in front of him. They'll try to bring him up. When he comes up, they're going to throw, try to throw behind him. Third down and six. From the shotgun. Pass is complete over the middle, 47. Will High, big first down, 33-yard line of Seattle. Dave Brown made the tackle. He lined up so close by the center, it was like a sawed-off shotgun. He was only about three and a half, four yards back. Well, they anticipated, I think, as this I get through saying, that they're going to have the linebackers get depth and throw underneath it. Throw underneath the linebackers. Will Height has got very good speed. And there you can see they're throwing underneath 55. See, 55, the previous play, batted the ball away, so they threw it in front of him. They'll probably throw another one in front of him until he comes up, and then they're going to try to throw behind him. But it was a big play for the Denver Broncos. A gain of 25 yards. DeBerg now has hit three of four, 37 yards passing. Rick Perro. He has three yards to the 30. It'll be second down and seven. We have no score. Moving on the nine minute mark time remaining in the first half is Jacob Green and Keith Butler make the tackle. They mark it at the 31 yard line, so it'll be second down and eight. He did an excellent job of picking up any yardage on that play because number 77, the number one draft choice, uh, Jeff Bryant, had him pinned to the sidelines and he stopped and cut back and did pick up a couple of yards. Second and eight. DeBerg is five on the pattern. Over the middle. Pass is complete to Peros. And he is spun around. His momentum will take him to the 25-yard line. They'll give him six. Keith Butler makes the tackle. 
So it'll be third down and still a couple. What you're doing is taking what they give you. Steve DeBerg, six, sixth year, 6'3, uh, 205. Did a great job against the San Francisco 49ers coming off the bench in the Denver's one victory of the year. Third down and two, 25 yard line of Seattle. First major offense for the Bronco. Peril, first down. Peril's to the 15. He got 10 yards. Listen to the crowd. This is an excellent run by Peril. Step. Watch him move right here. He stops, cuts back to the inside, slices through, picks up a first down. Now here it is. The Broncos had zero yards in the first quarter. Starting the second quarter, they were minus yardage. The Berg's got them on the move right now. Will Height to the 10, five. Into the end zone, touchdown. Will Height 15 yards away. I don't believe it. He has stated, he has stayed in shape. Will Height finds the spot. This is what they drafted him number one for, hoping to get that explosiveness in the backfield to getting into the end zone, and he does that. Fights his way into the end zone. The they say, is he in shape? He's spiking his body. <laughs> You've done a lot of gymnastic events, Charlie. How would you grade that? Oh, that was about a, uh, the touchdown would be a perfect 10, and the flip would be about an 8.2. Extra point is good. 76 yard drive in eight plays. Denver leads it 7 0 as Will Height celebrates. Out of San Jose State, the number one draft choice, his first NFL touchdown. That's his first flip, too. I want to see him four or five years to see if he can still do that after <laughs> scoring a touchdown. Never I've seen anything like that before. Rich Carlos, the barefoot kicker, kicking off from the 35 with Lane and Ivory deep. Taken the five yard line by Ivory. Horace is to the 20, to the 25. Flag is down as he returns to about the 27 yard line. He has returned of 22 yards on the play. But we have a marker. Number 28 is Jackson. He is on the suicide squad. He <laughs> sacrificed his body. He really took a shot. The penalty will be against the Seahawks. Illegal block during the return. Number 27, receiving team. I'd like you to uh, share your turkey with Dick Enberg and Merlin Olson on uh, Thursday, Thanksgiving Day. The Cleveland Browns, the Dallas Cowboys. Both the Browns and the Cowboys won today, and it'll be a nice way to spend Thanksgiving. So be with us. Dennis Smith, the strong safety that we mentioned earlier, possibility of a concussion is back into the ball game. Theotis Brown and Eric Lane are the two running backs for the Seahawks. Theotis Brown to the 22 has four. Three second down and six. Ruland Jones and Tom Jackson on the tackle. It's amazing how things turn around in a hurry, isn't it? Yes. It was all Seattle. Seattle had two scoring opportunities, came away with nothing. They missed the field goal and they failed on the fourth down in one situation. And all of a sudden, DeBerg gets the, the Denver Broncos moving in their head seven to nothing. Second down and seven. Sideline offensive conference. Join a double fake and play action. It'll, it's complete. Metzelars, Pete Metzelars, the rookie from Wabash. He was an excellent college basketball player there, brings it in. Pickup of 23 and a first down. I might say that was an excellent throw by Zorn. He had to have great touch to just float that ball over the, the linebackers and into the, the hands of Metzelars. And he took that like he would a, a nice pass on the basketball court near the hoop. And he needed a man who was 6'7, which is what he <laughs> is. Steve Wilson has checked into the secondary. Zorn now is 7 of 10, 107 yards throwing. Right. 
Seattle 45 yard line. Second back through is Theodis Brown. He has three yards to the 48. Games remaining in the shortened season for the Seahawks, Pittsburgh, Raiders, Chicago, New England, Cincinnati, and then Denver. For the Broncos, San Diego next week, then Atlanta, the Rams, Kansas City, the Raiders, and Seattle. You know, speaking of Pittsburgh, Charlie, and that, that, that Pittsburgh uh, Houston game, Bradshaw threw his 200th touchdown pass, also he threw his 200th interception this time. Second down seven. Zorn's pass is incomplete. Both defenders slip. Lewis Wright slip. Dennis Smith, who's back in the ballgame, he slips. Still almost picked, picked off an interception. Walker, the intended receiver, will be third down seven. You can see Zorn is pointing to his receiver, Walker, saying, this is where I wanted you to go. Here is a problem that we've talked about. The, the lack of preparation for a ball game. The, the timing is so very important. You can't be off by very much. If you are, if you're off, you're going to be unsuccessful. Seattle has converted three of six third down opportunities. 4.49 time remaining first half. Broncos lead at 7 0. He's looking for a blitz. He goes deep. It is incomplete. Paul Johns. Now, the problem that Johns has, if you will notice the shadows, as he looks back over that right shoulder, which he was doing, he's looking right into the sun. Another problem he's going to go have is go back and face Jim Zorn. This ball was beautifully thrown. He had good arc on it, and it goes right through his hands. It would have been a big, big play. He should have had it. You're right. You can see that he is looking at it. The sun may be in his eyes, but the ball is beautifully thrown. Jeff West will be kicking for down seven. Upchurch is there if there is a return. His first punt was 39 yards. This is a good one. Fair catch. Does it make the end zone? Yes. It'll be a touchback. Almost. Almost dropped it inside the five. And a great move by Upchurch signaling for a fair catch. They slow down and stop. Hitting it gave an opportunity to get into the end zone. That gives them us an opportunity to take this time out. Jones, Lynn Dawson, we have four minutes, 31 seconds left to go. First half. Denver out in front of Seattle, 7 0. Paul Howard and Keith Bishop are now in the offensive line for the Broncos, along with Minor, Glasser, and Lanier. Denver from the 20 yard line, first down. Steve DeBerg, the quarterback. Greg Morton started. Went through two series, did not move the offense, and DeBerg replaces him as Perros carries and a flag drops on the play. Dave Brown with the tackle. A gain of seven should the play stand up to the 27 yard line. It will go against the Broncos. Take it back to the 10. It's a big break for Seattle because what Denver does not want to do is give up the football down at this end and they're not going to take too many chances throwing the football. They'll throw safe passes or try to run a draw or a screen or get it to the back. I don't think they want to throw it downfield in the middle. Mark for the spot of the foul so it's the 14. Holding number 80 offense. Holding on Rick Upchurch. We pause briefly for station identification. This is the NBC television network. News for LA tonight at 6. Keep in touch with us on KNBC Los Angeles. We're back to action. Will Hyde gets the call. First down and 16 from the 14 yard line. He goes to the 17, has three. So it'll be second down and 13. Here's a look at next Sunday the NFL on NBC. The Raiders at Cincinnati, Houston at New England, Baltimore at Buffalo. Pittsburgh at Seattle, Kansas City against the Rams, and Denver at San Diego. This is Charlie Jones, Lynn Dawson with 350 and counting time remaining second quarter. Denver leading seven to nothing. 
Gerald Wilhite, the rookie from San Jose State, scoring his first NFL touchdown from 15 yards out. Little play action and now pressure, and the pass is incomplete. I'm surprised, Lynn, we haven't had more penalties. Seattle three times for 30 yards, Denver twice for 15. Well, that shows that somebody is concentrating out there. Generally, when you when you run into penalties, that you're running into someone who is not concentrating on what they're doing. Robert Hardy was the man putting the pressure on DeBerg. Third down, 13. They're in a situation now where it's another screen situation or a draw situation. I believe they want to take a chance on an interception. Mark Bell has checked in at defensive right in. Denver has converted two of five third down opportunities. And we've got flags flying. There was action prior to the snap of the ball. And Jerry Seaman, the referee, will uh, sort it out. False start, number 71, offense. Claudie Miner called on a false start. So he may have lost that concentration you were talking about. <laughs> Sorry, I even brought that up about the penalty. With 3.33 remaining in the half, Seattle has plenty of time if they stop right now to get in and get some points. They're down in 18 from the 12 yard line. From the shotgun. Sliding out of the pocket. Pass is complete to Peros. Peros to the 25, has to get to the 30, does not get there. He'll be about a yard and a half shy of the first down, and that will bring on the Broncos' most valuable player in this ball game, Luke Prestridge, who will be kicking. Great deal of pressure on DeBerg. He was does have the, the, uh, the ability and the mobility to move around back there. You're going to see pressure coming on, uh, coming to, and he moves up, gets the ball out to Perils. Perils does an excellent job of running when he gets the ball in the open field. And I said what they probably do, a safe pass, which it, that was, throwing in front of the linebackers who are getting a lot of depth, saying, all right, we'll concede five or six yards and make an open field tackle. They conceded the five or six yards, but they didn't make the open field tackle. Luke Prestridge has kicked three times in this ball game, and there's his average, 51.3. Paul John set for the return. John's, by the way, ranks fifth in the conference in punt returns. Oh, it's another beauty. John's bounces it at the 15-yard line. He's to the 20. Has about 10 yards on the return, a 56-yard punt by Luke Prestridge. So Seattle has the football. We've got a timeout. Two and a half minutes left to go. First half, Broncos lead it 7 another. First, we'll put you in the holiday spirit, the beauty and grace of world professional figure skating. Such former Olympic greats, Dorothy Hamill, Janet Lynn, Robin Cousins will be featured in encore performance from the Capitol Center in Landover, Maryland. It's an event you will not want to miss. This one is really a good one. That's next Saturday at 4 o'clock Eastern time on NBC Sports World. We've got a good ball game. Denver leading 7-0. Seattle with the ball. First down their own 25. David Hughes and Sherman Smith are the two running backs. And Mike Tice, the tight end, lost his concentration. Oh, that's embarrassing. <laughs> he was four yards into the secondary, and the ball had not been snapped. Got a quick start, though. He got good jump on <laughs> False start, number 86, offense. <laughs> He did. You're right. He did get a good start. There's no way to hide. He was oh, trying no. to hide out there, but there was no way that he could do that. <laughs> Look at and they all put that's Defense likes to help the official. Everybody's an official out there. <laughs> False start, number 86, offense. <laughs> and we must we must make a footnote that the Jerry Seaman, the referee, was also <laughs> laughing when he saw what happened. That is embarrassing, isn't it? There is no place to hide. First down, 15, 20-yard line. Zorn has protection, and he goes to Mike Tice. Is that right? 
Yes, it is. Mike Tice, the man who was offside. So he redeems himself with a reception at the 32. Has 12. It'll be second down and about three. But if he hadn't jumped offside to 12, would have given them a first down. Jim Ryan made the last tackle. Sherman Smith sweep right side. He goes to the 35, just across the 35-yard line. This should pick up the first down. As we now come to the two-minute warning, it will be given to both benches, and we'll take our two-minute timeout with Denver leading Seattle by a score of 7 to nothing at Mile High Stadium, where it is getting colder, but the football is hot. High Stadium, Denver, Colorado. The temperature dipping below 50 degrees. It was 50 at kickoff time. Denver 7, Seattle nothing. The Broncos a 76-yard drive in eight plays with Gerald Wilhite scoring from 15 yards out. I think if you can see in the top right part of your screen, you can see how it's cooling off because there's just a little bit of an area where the sun would be, be a, a problem for the receivers. Next Sunday, Seattle will be home in the Kingdom to host Pittsburgh, Denver on the road at San Diego against the always dangerous Chargers. First downs, eight to four. Seahawks lead that statistic. Zorn to throw. Zorn is sacked. Second time that he has been sacked, and it was Roland Jones who got it. Jones in his third year from Utah State. Jones is, uh, they, they consider the best pass rusher on this Denver defensive line. And you can see the quickness of Jones. Number 87, Roger Carr is in there, and he's been double teamed most of the time. That is the 16th time in this short season that a Seattle quarterback has been sacked over throwing Roger Carr. So it'll be third down and 16. One of the reasons they don't go to Lewis right side too often is because he's an outstanding defensive back. Here it is, number 20 is going against Roger Carr, stride for stride. Outstanding oh, defensive perfect. play by number 20. And, he, and he uses that sideline. That's right. And just keeps him pinned against that sideline. Yes. And the first chuck within the five yards, which is the allowable. That play did not work, but let's let's remember that play because he did throw it deep. To Roger Carr and that will tell those defensive backs that uh, he's not a, not afraid to go deep. Ones underneath may be open later on. Third down. Zorn goes deep the other side over throws everybody including the secondary. Closest intended receiver was Paul Johns and I don't know from Zorn's reaction Johns may have cut off the pattern. Because he overthrew him about 15 yards. I mean, there's no contest. Uh, they say never up, never in. <laughs> you know, you can you can get hurt by throwing it too short, but not when it's too long. I think Zorn saw that he was getting pressure on him. He just threw the ball away. Jeff West to kick. Rick Upchurch is set for the return. They better not relax on Upchurch. A lot of pressure on the kicker. He gets it off. Upchurch takes it. A flag is is down. Back downfield. Upchurch just a two or three yards. There's a lot of pressure on Jeff West. Did they get him for running into it? The kick was 39 yards. If they do, it carries the automatic first down, and Seattle would retain possession. Ken McAllister down very quickly for the Seahawks. It is going to be a defensive holding against the Denver Broncos which is a first down so Seattle will pick up the yardage of the penalty and the first down their offense will stay on the field that really is upsetting here it is you've got 121 remaining in the half you force them to punt they punt the ball you're going to get it back you can sit on it if you want to you're going to be in good field position holding, holding. number 34 defense he pulled a man aside to allow a teammate to go through to potentially block the kick. Well said, Jerry. That's right. That's what he was supposed that's to do. That's it. <laughs> but he wasn't supposed to get caught. <laughs> yeah, that's right. All right, first down, Seattle. They're on 34 yard line, 121. Time remaining, first down. Seattle trailing 7 0. Left flat, pass is complete. David Hughes, Hughes out of bounds, stops the clock, 40 yard line. Gain of six. Second and four. Tom Jackson was there for the defense. 
Might be wanting to get Jackson to hang around in that uh, short area and able to get somebody behind the linebackers. Plus, in fact, throwing the ball to Hughes to the outside, catch the ball, get as much as you can, get out of bounds, stop the clock. Three wide receivers, Paul Johns, Roger Carr, and Byron Walker. Theodis Brown and David Hughes are the blockers. There's not a tight end in the ballgame. Second and four. Right flat pass is complete to David Hughes. And he is out of bounds. And that stops the clock at the 46. First down. Jim Ryan with the tackle. Oh, this is a great throw by Jim Zorn. It had to be right there because Ryan had great coverage on Hughes. Take a look at it. Coming right into our camera. An outstanding throw by Jim Zorn. The layoff definitely hit has not hurt him in his throwing. Seattle with two timeouts left. 108 time remaining. The ball at the Seahawks 46 yard line. A couple of passes in front, a couple of passes in front. Won't be surprised if he goes deep. It's there, 35 yard line to Paul Johns and Zorn hurries up the offense. Jackson and Kyle make the tackle a gain of 19. You couldn't get that behind the linebackers if you didn't get him up and he got him up with those two short passes. Four on the pattern. Pass is complete to Smith out of the backfield. They'll take a timeout here. Jim Ryan with the tackle. 26 yard line. We've got a timeout. 39 seconds left to go. The Seahawks on the move. We'll be back in a moment. Uh, Norm Johnson is of Seattle. He's only kicked one uh, one in the National Football League and didn't make that, but he had plenty of distance. He missed from 38 yards out, but he had the distance. Second down and two. Do you go to the end zone here? I would. John's in motion. Screen. The screen. Theodis Brown, and he's out of out of bounds, stopping the clock. 23 yard line. Has the first down. 32 seconds left in the first half. Tom Jackson was there. Zorn has completed his last five passes. Most of them have been very safe passes. In the flat, that last one was a screen pass to Theodis Brown, trying to to get some blockers out in front of him. You see that. 61 is Robert Pratt making a block there. But you can see the reaction of the Denver defense blowing along the line of scrimmage. Did get out of bounds. They still have 32 seconds remaining and one timeout left in the first half. Just outside the Denver 23 yard line. Stay with us. NFL 82 at halftime. Lynn Berman will be hosting. We'll be updating everything that's happened today as the NFL has returned to NBC. Zorn misses. Way off of Roger Carr. They did not read each other. Carr cut back to his left. The throw. Expected to cut to his right. Aaron Kyle had his hands on it. Should have had the interception. Seattle really got a break on this one because 22 Aaron Kyle of the Broncos had the ball slip right through his hands. Zorn has thrown to eight different receivers today. If Kyle would have caught that, that would have been the ninth. <laughs> That's right. That ain't funny, McGee. No. I kind of like it. <laughs> Second down and 10, 26 seconds left. First half. Denver leads 7 0. The blitz is on. Five on the pattern. Knocked away. Almost intercepted. Randy Gratishar. Outstanding defensive play. Well, he's an outstanding linebacker. Led this football team in. Uh, in tackles, I think, for the last seven years. Hasn't missed a game in eight years. 122 consecutive games. Gratishaw is blitzing. 53 right there. Randy is blitzing. Too good a job of blocking it. And he's watching the quarterback all the, all the while. Gets his hand up and knocks it down. I said he, he last year had 258 tackles. Career total of 1,674. That is a lot of hitting, Charlie. Third down and 10. Blitz is on. Zorn has pressure. Steps away. Throw. Sideline pattern incomplete. Just getting rid of it. Getting rid of the football. Sherman Smith was over there, but you're right. Field goal attempt upcoming. Be fourth down and ten. 
At the 23, he'll be kicking from about the 30 and attempt to 40 yards. That is within the range of Norm Johnson of what we have seen today. Now with Seattle, you always have to consider the fake, and Jim Zorn is holding. From the 31, a kick of 41 yards, and it is no good. So Norm Johnson has missed from 38 and from 41. He was short, wobbling, and to the right. Well, the snap was not that great. Zorn had to field it pretty good to get it down. You see it was low. He gets it down just that little bit. Disturbed the timing of the kicker. He didn't get everything into it. It was way short. So Denver will take over at the line of scrimmage, which is the Bronco 24-yard line, needing only to run off 10 seconds on the clock. And to go into the locker room with a seven to nothing lead. They're going to run the ball. They've got double tight in there, two tight ends. Safe handoff to Perros. Perros to about the 32 yard line where he stopped by Kenny Easley. Easley, by the way, has had an outstanding defensive game as the first half comes to a close. With Denver out in front by a score of seven to nothing. Gerald Wilhite, the rookie from San Jose State, scoring the only touchdown of the ball game. He scored it from 15 yards away. His first touchdown in the National Football League. Halftime, Broncos lead. We'll be back. The back was 0 for 2. Steve DeBerg replaced it, completing 4 of 7 for 60 yards. For Seattle, Jim Zorn has put the ball in the air 24 times. He's completed 13 for 162 yards. Will Height scoring the touchdown from 15 yards out. NFL 82 half to Wade Manning. It is Will Height to the 20. Nice return to about the 24, maybe the 25 yard line. 21 yards on the return. And Denver will be moving on offense again. McAllister was there. Ken McAllister, number 48, the rookie from the University of San Francisco, made the tackle for the Seahawks. Seattle has definitely had some breaks in this football game. The offense, uh, a couple of penalties, gave them opportunities to score. They didn't get it. It was the defense that had to come up with the touchdown. Nine turnovers. This year have led to 31 opposing points. Eglop coming in motion to tight end, going deep and overthrow it. Rick Upcher. That was a confidence builder, Charlie. He should have had the last pass that, that, that hit him on the shoulder pass, was intercepted and back for a touchdown. So DeBerg came right back to Upchurch saying, You're still part of this ball club. You are a deep threat. John Harris and Dave Brown had the coverage for the Seahawks secondary. Will Height and Manning are now in the ball game for the Broncos. Second down and 10 from the 25. The Berg ball knocked away. Taken on the bounce by Robert Hardy. So it'll be third down and 10. It looked like it slipped right out of his hands. Uh, Charlie, when he started the motion forward, let's take a look at Will Hyde is there. He's wide open, just goes right in front of the linebackers. Take a look at DeBerg. That ball, oh, yeah. yeah, that ball slipped now, right. When out we of were head. with the officials, they bring the 24 footballs into their room and they try and rub all of that stuff off of it so that it won't be slipped. What happens when it gets cool, like it's cooling off right now? That ball sometimes, if it's new and hasn't been used, gets like a piece of ice or a piece of glass. The bird. First time a wide receiver has a reception for the Broncos. It is Steve Watson. 19 yards, first down. Kenny Easley with a tackle. 
just a matter of time. I was wondering when they were going to go to, to this man. He's a tremendous receiver. He's got good height. He's coming down, trying to find the open area. And he does. He slides into it. The ball was right on target. He comes up with a catch. The first by a wide receiver for the, the Broncos and a first down. This time the ball did not slip. Good throw by DeBerg. First down, Denver. Just shy of their own 45 yard line. Rick Perros. Perros with four. It'll be second down and six. The ball at the Denver 49. Perros has run real well today. I mean, there hasn't been a great deal there for him, but he is he's made the most out of the, the runs that he's made. He's had to dance and look for the open hole and change directions on most of the most of the carries that he's had this afternoon. It's caught. Watson. 17 yards. Charlie, I said at the beginning of the show that a passing game is one in which if you get two players, a quarterback and a receiver, with good timing, it can be successful. That is, if you get time to throw the football. The timing was excellent on this. DeBerg got rid of the ball just in time to get it over the outstretched arms of number 58, Bruce Schultz, and into the arms of Watson. Watson ties for the most yards receiving in the conference last year with more than 1,200. Dave Preston. Kenny Easley with a tackle. An excellent block by Peros, his, his running mate out there. He took off and threw a good block on the outside cornerman, uh, Keith Simpson, number 42. So those two backs working together very well on that play. Gain of nine. It'll be second down and one at the Seahawks 23 yard line. He was Mr. Everything last year, over 1,000 yards, total offense. First down and more perils. 10 yard line, 13 yards. Dave Brown and Bruce Schultz with a tackle. They found something out there. They, this is a hole, the first time that he's had any running room whatsoever. Good blocking by that left side of the offensive line of the Denver Broncos. You Classic can see the and minor. The line surge. He found something he hadn't seen all day, Charlie. That was a nice hole. Took advantage of it. First down at the 10. It'll be first down and goal to go. Peros again. Same play, different results. Good job on the defense of Seattle. Keith Butler with the tackle. At the seven-yard line, second down, goal to go. Butler... Hurt his ribs in practice this week in the short practice. He was questionable, but he has been playing the whole ball game. Broncos trying to break the tie. Ninth play of the drive. Will Height, three yard line. Third down goal to go. Jacob Green with a tackle. I might say a touchdown saving tackle by number 79 Jacob Green. Had he not made that tackle I believe he'd have been in for a score. Denver with three first downs in this drive. In the first half they had only four. Third down goal to go. Three yard line. The crowd will tell the story. Church incomplete. Play pass faking to his back and he's drilling this ball. One thing he does want to do an intercept and take a chance of that. But it was also a catchable ball by Upchurch. Might have been a little difficult catch, but it's very catchable. Field goal attempt. DeBerg to hold. 
Rich Carlos has a sprained ankle in that bare front of his. Straight at playing basketball. From the 11, 21 yards away, it's good. Carlos on the year is now three for three in field goal attempts. Denver has the lead. By a score of 10 to 7, we'll be back with a kickoff. For this Thursday, Thanksgiving Day, Cleveland Browns, Dallas Cowboys. So share a turkey leg with Dick and Merlin and enjoy football as the NFL is back where it belongs on NBC. Denver 10, Seattle 7. Rich Carlos to kick off. Eric Lane on the return. Eric to the 50. Turns to about the 18, maybe the 19-yard line where Seattle will go to work. Rob Lytle down on the special team. Scoreboard Lynn. St. Louis leading San Francisco in the third quarter, 13 to 10. San Francisco having their problems this year. In the third quarter, Washington leading the Giants 21 to 3. Redskins will be 3 and 0, right? Yes. Seattle, first and 10 from the 18. Zorn has completed 13 of 25 passes for 162 yards. The defense scoring the Seahawks touchdown. Bruce Schultz with a 28 yard interception. Bounced out of the arms of Rick Upchurch. Defensively, Reuben Carter and Randy Grantish are there as we pause briefly for station identification. This is the NBC Television Network. This is Charlie Jones and Lynn Dawson. We have five minutes and four seconds left to play, third quarter. At Mile High Stadium in Denver, the Broncos leading the Seattle Seahawks by a score of 10 to 7. Seattle with the ball. Second and six from their own 22-yard line. Zorn to throw. Pass is complete to Paul Johns. He slips a tackle down the sideline. Cut from behind at the 39. A gain of 17. First down. Mike Harden with the tackle. I believe that's about the first pass that they've completed on Lewis Wright. It's a good move by Johns. Almost escaped, too. Well, you said something earlier when he went deep going over right. Remember that because this time you could come back underneath it. That's exactly what he did. He faked going deep, stopped, and came back toward the sidelines. Zorn has moved this, oh, this club. The problem is, you know, you got to get some points. And they've missed on about four opportunities. First down at the Seattle 39. Horace Ivory is wrapped up for a loss. He'll lose two to the 37. Second at 12, and Jim Ryan, the man they've been picking on, he was waiting this uh, time. He was picking on them. He was about two yards deep in the backfield. And they had some stunts going on out, out there between the linebackers and the defensive linemen, and they guessed right. Second down and 12. Well, there's been a change. Now San Francisco is leading the St. Louis Cardinals 17 to 13 in the third quarter. Reverse. Larger. 45 out of bounds at the 46. Aaron Kyle was the man who bumped him out. I guess his head is clear, uh, Charlie, because he came around on a reverse, and he's going to get a good block from number 61, Robert Pratt, who sees a man has a chance to, to block him right there. You saw in, in your stream, he knocked Tom Jackson out of the way, who would have made the tackle, enabling uh, Larson to get free and pick up some good yardage. Still in a situation now where they're probably going to have to throw the football third and three. But it's a whole lot better than third and ten when you know you have to throw. That's Largen in motion. Horace Ivory. He will come up about a yard shy of the first down. Broncos saying they recovered the fumble. Evans was there for the defense. What happens is he became airborne when he came down. When that shoulder makes contact. 
the play is dead. If the ball then bounces loose because of the shoulder making contact. Now, uh, while they're getting ready to kick, uh, no, I don't think we'll have time. We'll hold the scores. We're going to. We'll hold those scores for we got plenty of time left. Hold another quarter. Jeff West will be punting. Fourth down in a yard. Upchurch set for the return. Upchurch at the 18. Back to the 15. To the 14. He'll lose about three yards on the return. So the Seahawks have bottled up. Rick Upchurch on his punt returns. That kick 35 yards by Jeff West. And John Yarno, the center, was down. He made the tackle. We'll be back. At Mile High Stadium in Denver, where the Broncos lead the Seattle Seahawks by a score of 10 to 7. Defensively, Green, Hardy, Tuyasa Sopo, and Jeff Bryant, the front four. Schultz with the interception of the touchdown. Jackson and Butler, the linebackers. And a very active secondary, Simpson Brown, Easley, and Harris. Denver first down their own 15 yard line 253 time remaining third quarter first back through is Rick Peros he picks up three to the 18 it'll be second down and seven to the Sopo makes a tackle in let's check the scoreboard big day in the National Football League Pittsburgh defeating Houston 24 to 10 they're still undefeated Cincinnati down Philadelphia 18 to 14 Dallas over Tampa Bay 14 to 9. And Cleveland edged New England 10 to 7. Jets romping over Baltimore 37 to nothing. Miami edging Buffalo 9 to 7. Miami still undefeated. We'll have more later. Right now it is Will Hype. Breaks it down the sideline, slipping two, maybe three tackles. 41 yard line. 23 yards. Tuyasa Sopo got it. Well, they said in preseason this young man looked great. And he is. He finds the hole. Good blocking by that Denver offensive line. He slips a tackle, maintains his balance, and picks up about 12 more additional yards. 71, Claudy Miners, an outstanding offensive tackle. He gets into Tuyasa Sopo, stays with him long enough. See, if he hadn't stayed with him long enough, Tuyasa Sopo probably would have tackled him three or four yards back downfield. First down. Perro. 44. Second down, seven. Tuyasa Sopo again with the tackle. Here's the scoreboard. Atlanta defeating the Rams 34 17. It was Chicago over Detroit 20 to 17. Green Bay downing Minnesota 26 to 7. The Packers still undefeated. They're 3 0. And a final, New Orleans defeating the Kansas City Chiefs 27 to 17. Third quarter score, San Francisco on top of St. Louis, 17 to 13. And here it is, Denver 10, Seattle 7, Broncos on 44-yard line, 50 seconds left to go in the third. Perros incomplete. It'll be third down and seven, Keith Simpson. The defender for the Seahawks was there. There's one other score in a game that is going on in the and third that's quarter. Third quarter, Washington. Ahead of the Giants, 21 to 10. The Giants coming up with a, a touchdown. And the important thing right here, this score, Denver leading Seattle by the score of 10 to 7 with 45 seconds remaining in the third period. Mark Bell checks in at defensive right end, replacing Jeff Bryant. Third down and seven. Bell gives a little better pass rush. Coaches say he's the quickest of their defensive linemen. From the shotgun, he is sacked. And it was Robert Hardy who got him. I didn't say you have to credit the defense of Seattle because DeBerg really had sufficient time to get rid of the football if someone was open. Apparently, no one was open. That is the second sack for the Seahawks. They got Morton one time early, first time they've gotten DeBerg. Paul John set to return the kick of Luke Prestridge, who remains in this ball game the most valuable Bronco boy his punting has been fantastic he's averaged over 52 yards a kick another good kick it is taken on the far side by Gregory Johnson 
flag is down and Johnson is down around the 28 yard line. Rob Lytle again down for the Broncos specialty team a 48 yard kick below average for Prestridge <laughs> and we'll go back to check the marker. But the hang time was great. It was up there hanging up there. Five point two seconds. Let's take a look if we can see the clip. Yes yes 80 83 of the Denver Broncos was clipped that's uh, that's manning the wide receiver and the culprit Eastley number 45. Generally when uh, when you see a return man dancing around back there it invites the opportunity for some sort of illegal block. One second left to go in the period. So as soon as we get everything sorted out in the first playoff. We'll be changing into the field and go to the final chapter of this game. Here's the call. Post possession foul, number 45, illegal block above the waist. Here it is once again, number 83. Watch the block by 45, which is was easily. All right, we're going to take a timeout right now. It is Denver 10 and Seattle 7. We'll be back with the final second of this period in just a moment. Second of the third quarter. Seattle has a first down the ball on their own nine yard line. Denver leading by a score of 10 to 7. Theotis Brown is the wide receiver wide to the near side. Eric Lane the remaining back. Just barely got it off and saved the safety. Flag was dropped. They are going to call I believe a safety intentional grounding. Larry Evans put the pressure on him. He just dumped it off. And it will be marked from the spot of the foul. Officials are conferencing and will have the official call. There's intentional grounding there as a safety. There is no penalty on the play. The ball was blocked. The ball was blocked, so there is no penalty. Woo. Number 56 is Larry Evans, a linebacker, blitzing through there. And Zorn has to get rid of the ball. And it's a screen pass because you see 65 is Bailey coming out there to help block. They escaped. It's the fourth quarter. Broncos lead by three. That's the end of the third quarter. We'll be right back after these messages from your local station. Five degrees. However, on the field of combat, it's a little bit cooler, but we have a little something for everyone here. I'm Charlie Jones. Lynn Dawson. It's about 45, 43 degrees on the fields. The wind has started to pick up. It's getting cold. You tell the cameraman down on the field that it's nice and warm. They're not going to believe it. Uh, they came up to booth at <laughs> halftime, gave me a report on how cold it was getting. All right. We start the fourth quarter. Seattle from their own nine yard line, second down and 10. Zorn is down at the one yard line. Third sack for the Broncos. Barney Chavis got it. It'll be third and 19. Third and 18. You do not have a lot of time when you're down there by by your own goal line. You got to call some passes where you get rid of it in less than three seconds. Good job of pressure right there by Barney Chavis bringing him down. Zorn did lean forward making sure that he prevented the two point safety. Chavis starting his 78th consecutive game. That is the longest streak among the current Bronco players. Charlie, they can't go back much further. It's to the one yard line. Third down, 18. Flag is down. It's intercepted. Flag was down. Excuse me. It was David Hughes. I'm sorry. Saw the marker go. Pass was complete to you. Jim Ryan made the tackle. They continue to go after Ryan. Barney Chavis is saying holding. And if it is defensive holding on a third and 18, it carries with it an automatic first down. Yeah, but on the other side, Seattle saying, no, they were holding. We'll leave it up to the men in the striped shirts.
They bring it back to the line of scrimmage. They have offsetting penalties, and they'll mark it off from there. Five yards against the Broncos. Encroachment, number 79, defense. We were just talking about the great play that Marty Chavis made when he knew that they were going to pass. He's trying to edge up, I think, a little bit, Charlie. They apparently lined up offsides. But he was taking Steve August right back to the quarterback. Third down and 13 from the six yard line. Zorn throws. It is tipped. It is intercepted. Broncos have the ball at the 29. Mike Harden. Harden number 31 with the interception. Largent the intended receiver. Seattle had some breaks, I think, in this ball game, but think, the breaks have a way of turning around. You remember the tip ball that hit off of Upchurch? Schultz caught it, went in for the touchdown. This time the ball pops up in the air, and Mike Hart, number 31, comes up with the football, and he comes up with excellent field position for the Denver Broncos. And it was Randy Gratishard that tipped the ball first for the Broncos. First Seattle turnover. Denver, Seahawks 29. Second back through is Dave Preston, and the flag is down. Manu Tuyas is Sopo with the tackle. Through three quarters. Broncos have come back. If you recall, in the first, after one quarter, they had zero yards. It'll be holding against Denver. Penalties Denver seven times for 81 yards, Seattle five for 45. Illegal motion, number 62 offense, penalty declined. Holding, number 64 offense, accepted. Multiple choice. Charlie, remember in the first half, I think you said, isn't it amazing that there have been so few penalties? And I said concentration. Well, the concentration isn't there as, as much as it was in the first half. Perhaps the bodies are getting tired of Screen pass. Will Hype. Has a couple of yards on the play to the 37. Key Simpson with a tackle. It'll be second down and 18. That's a good open field tackle by Simpson because Will Hype is not the easiest man in the world to bring down in the open field. 13 and a half minutes left in the ball game. The Broncos leading the Seahawks 10 to 7. The lights are on at Mile High Stadium. And the temperature continues to drop. Snow expected either tonight or tomorrow. We always uh, love coming to Denver in November because usually a snow's on us. All right. Pass is dropped. Dave Preston. Bruce Schultz was there for the defense. Preston should have had it. He definitely should have had it. He jumped up in the air when the ball was coming right to his stomach. Now, there's no reason to do that because you can't run with your feet up in the air. At the top of the show, we talked about the strike, eight weeks off, three days of practice. I have noted the one thing that I have noticed, more drop passes that are very, very catchable passes. We also mentioned that in the fourth quarter, this altitude would have an effect, particularly we thought on Seattle. Third down 18. Incomplete. Preston the intended receiver. Now something that DeBerg and Zorn have both done. When a, there's been a misrun route or a pass has been dropped, they have gone back immediately to that receiver. Yes, Ed, that ball was thrown a little bit behind him. Been a very tough catch for him to come up with it. Here they were in field goal, almost in field goal range. It looked like it when they had the interception. They're back out there now. Prestridge, the punter, is in the ball game. And I'm sure he's going to try to angle it out of the inside the 10 yard line. Uh, 
There goes his average, Charlie. Because yes. He's, his average is a 51.6 yards. And oh, he goes to the it. corner, and he's got it at the four-yard line. That's even better. That's even better than a long kick because he nails it out inside the 10. If Denver wins, he'll get a game ball. He has had an outstanding game. We'll be back to Seahawks in offense. 1982 National Football League game is being brought to you by Mazda Cars and Trucks. The more you look, the more you like their outstanding value. By ColecoVision, the arcade quality home video game system, and by Canon, manufacturer of advanced plain paper copiers. I believe Seattle is a little tired of uh, lining up in their huddle in the end zone. That's very discouraging when you take a look and you got over 95 yards to go to score. You saw a shot of the crowd here. 1,187 no-shows. That's a record no-show. Stadium owes just over 75,000. David Hughes just trying to give Seattle a little room to operate. He picks up six yards. That was a basic play. That goes all the way back to junior high school. That was a straight dive play. Here it is, number 75, Ruland Jones. The offensive tackle turning him out, but he doesn't stop. He comes back and gets involved in the play. But not before six yards was picked up. Theodos Brown. Today's telecast is presented by authority of the National Football League intended for the private use of our audience. Any rebroadcast or the use of this telecast without the express written consent of the Denver Broncos and the National Football League is prohibited. Third down and four, 10 yard line. Key play for Denver and for the Seahawks. If Denver holds, then they have an opportunity to come in with a good field position. Seahawks are 3 for 12 third down opportunities. They're 0 for 3 in the second half. This is third down and 4. Had to get rid of it. It is incomplete. It'll be an incomplete pass. Strong, strong rush. Roland Jones with great pressure. The offensive lineman is supposed to slow up that defensive end. Nobody touched Jones. Zorn had no choice but to get rid of the football. Otherwise, it would have been two points. He got there as quick as Zorn did. And Zorn had a yard step on him. Zorn is quick. Rulin Jones just took off. He took to the inside. Nobody touched him. That was that was a screen pass, but you must stop the initial charge to the defensive line. Jeff West kicking to Rick Upchurch. Upchurch at the 50. Has a yard, and that's all on the return. A 41-yard kick. We've got a timeout. 11:22 left to go in the game. The Broncos in the football and they lead by three. We'll be back in a moment. 11 minutes and 22 seconds left to go in the ball game. Broncos have the ball. Just to the Seattle side of the 50-yard line. Officially, it's marked at the 49. Steve Watson comes in motion. The Berg has pressure. He was hit just as he made the release. It'll be an incomplete pass. The key is if the wrist breaks going forward. Did not see the pressure of Jeff Bryant coming from the backside. Next Thursday, NBC Sports. Uh, Thanksgiving is just a few days away. And after uh, Lynn talks about that, we'll talk about. Oh, there it is. Cleveland and Dallas. They both won today. That was a turkey of an introduction, but it'll be a great <laughs> turkey on Thursday. Cleveland and the Dallas Cowboys. So join us on NBC for that telecast. Second and ten. Pass is complete over the middle, then dropped. Did not have possession. Will hide it is incomplete. It'll be third down and ten. I'm wondering why they are throwing now rather than running. Use up a little of the clock. They've got good field position. Yeah, but they were in a second ten situation where they they had to, although they tried to throw the, the football on first down. And now it is third and ten, so they have to throw. Either throw or a draw play or a screen play. And all most of the time, with the exception of a couple plays, they have gone to their backs. That's right. 
Watson has caught a couple of balls. Knocked away. Good defensive play. 77, Jeff Bryant, the rookie from Clemson, coming on strong in the fourth quarter. He was their number one draft choice, and that's two out of three plays that he did a tremendous job. All right, taking a look at the series, Broncos lead seven to two, eight, 1981. They split. Seattle has never won here in Denver. All right, here's Prestridge to kick. They've been playing in their end of the, the field the entire second half, with the exception of the first drive. His average is, as you saw, outstanding. Goes for the corner. Johns takes it on the run at the 15. Little head fake. He has about seven or eight yards on the return. We've got a timeout. Ten minutes, 57 seconds. Left to go in the ball game. That punt covering only 30 yards. Way under his average. We'll be back in a moment. Radio. As we're reaching for twilight here, Seahawks have the ball on their own 24-yard line. First down and 10. Jim Zorn, the quarterback. Little play action, and the receiver fell down. Paul Johns, the intended receiver, and he slipped as he made his cut. It'll be second down and 10 at the Seattle 24-yard line as we look now to the Bronco defense. Richie McCabe, the Bronco secondary defensive coach, is at home recovering from surgery, watching the ball game, and uh, we wish him well. Yes, and hope sir. That, uh, you know, Richie he's, goes all the way back. Richie and I played together with the Steelers a couple of years ago. He was, in fact, I think the ball boy. That's right. He was. The Steelers when he was a youngster. Our best to you, Richie. Then hurry up and get well. Zorn ends up with the football. I'm not sure if they missed the handoff or if it was planned that way. Well, but it, it was a mistake, whatever it was. <laughs> Either way, it was not. It didn't work. Dive play looked like he just maybe felt that he could really put the ball in his stomach and he didn't want a chance of a fumble and kept the ball himself. Larry Evans and Don Latimer there for the defense. Third down and nine, 25 yard line. As his man under throws him, he scoops it up. That is John Sawyer, the backup tight end, or the number two tight end. A pickup of 17 yards. It was under thrown. He had to turn and scoop it off of the grass. First down. Had that ball been on the money, he would have had a big gain out of it. As it is, it's a big play for Seattle because they hadn't been doing anything. Zorn just lobbing the ball down, or it is under throw. Sawyer comes back and makes a good catch. Gets up and tries to get some additional yards, but if he had hit him on stride, been a big, big play. He guarded it well. They're not sure if it was a short <laughs> hop or not. Zorn, 17 of 32, 196 yards through the air. First down, Seattle on their own 42 yard line. Pass is complete, large and out of bounds. First down. Denver 46 yard line. Let's go back to that last pass. Yes, we want to see if it indeed was a reception. Oh, he did a great job. I typical it looks like it might have hit the ground, but whatever it is, you can see that he he's curled up in a so ball. Well, it was the only call the officials could <laughs> make. That's right. You don't, you know, if in doubt, you got to give it to him. First down at the Denver 46. 9-11 left to go. Misses Larger. Second and 10 at the 46. We've mentioned conditioning and we've talked about the altitude here. And you can look at uh, Larger is breathing deeply. And he's, he asks, he says, come on in. Here it is. Largent makes a good move. He stumbles as he makes the move, but he is open right there. Had he not stumbled, I think he'd have been able to catch up with the football. 
No, he's back. He, I thought he waved for somebody to come in for, him, but he's back in the huddle. Second and ten. Second back through is Sherman Smith. Smith may pick up the first down as he comes down at the 36 yard line. He needed 10 and I believe he got it. Larry Evans makes the tackle. Good cutback by Smith. Tom Jackson was blitzing from the outside right to linebacker position. He's going to that side and he sees that it's all congested. He cuts back to his right, jumps to the outside, and picks up a first down. All of a sudden now, Seattle has come to life. Sherman Smith, 11 carries, 58 yards. First down at the Denver 36. Hand off to David Hughes. Hughes to the 30 yard line. He picks up six. It'll be second down and four. That didn't look like much of a play because it was a basic straight dive play. But it was successful because of that 3 4 defense. That what Denver does so exceptionally well is pursue along the line of scrimmage. Gratishaw doing an outstanding job. The best thing to do sometimes is run straight at them. Next week, next Sunday on NBC, the Raiders at Cincinnati, Houston at New England, Baltimore at Buffalo. Those are the early games. It's a doubleheader weekend on NBC. Pittsburgh at Seattle, Kansas City against the Rams, Denver at San Diego. So be with us next Sunday. But before next Sunday, join us on Thanksgiving Day. Zorn says, I cannot call the signal. No, he went he went past 30 seconds. It'll cost him five. I thought the crowd was going to take him out of it. We'll take a timeout. 727 left to go in the game. Denver leads by three. Seattle is on the move. No, we're, we're going to stay here is the word from the truck. We're not going. Number 11 offense. It's not the time to do that, Charlie, for the uh, delay of game. Yardage have been very difficult for Seattle to, to pick up and give away five yards like that. 727 remaining. Seattle started this drive on their own 24. They're now at the Denver 35. In the coverage, an outstanding pass and reception by Sherman Smith, and he was well covered. That was a great pass by Zorn. Fakes it. Smith is coming out of the backfield. He puts it the only spot that could be caught. As you can see the linebacker is in front. Lewis Wright is coming up to knock him out of bounds, but the ball was perfectly thrown. A gain of 24 yards to the 11-yard line. Linebacker Jim Ryan linebacker Ryan has come out game. Rick Dennison has replaced him first and 10 at the 11 7 21 left to go in the game Seattle on the move they trail by three Norm Johnson has missed five three seconds fields four seconds attempt. he's going to have to call timeout or something he gets the playoff with one second left on the 30 second clock Horace Ivory He'll lose three to the 14. There's Jim Ryan who came out just a moment ago. Mike Harden and Aaron Kyle with the last tackle. Ryan replaced by Rick Dennison. Just inside the 14 yard line. That last time they had one second on the 30 second clock when he got that ball snapped. They had people running around out there, didn't know what was going on. Nine seconds now. This time the snap with four seconds left in the 30 second. Got a man clock. open. It's complete to David Hughes. Seven yard line. Harden with the tackle. 46 is Hughes going out of the backfield, cutting to the flat. The ball is thrown perfectly once again, makes the reception. 
Hard coming up, making the tackle. Knocking him out of bounds. Third down situation. They have been in this situation about four times in the ball game. Come away with nothing. Third and six at the seven yard line. Down to 10 seconds, nine seconds on the 30 second clock again before they get out of the huddle. Snap with two seconds left of the 30 second clock. Into the end zone, knocked away incomplete, almost intercepted. That was a poor decision on the part of Jim Zorn. He should have thrown that ball away. Sherman Smith, the intended receiver, Aaron Kyle, was there for the defense. Field goal attempt upcoming. They're going for the tie. Norm Johnson has missed from 38, 41, and 23 yards. He is 0 for 3. He does have an extra point to his credit. He has not made a field goal in the NFL. From the 15, an attempt of 25 yards in the tie. It is good. Norm Johnson from 25 yards away. And we are tied 10-10 with 536 left to go in the game. We'll take a timeout as Mike McCormick, the interim head coach of the Seahawks, looks on. We're tied at 10. We'll be back in a moment. Six seconds left in regulation play. If we're tied. After the end of fourth quarters, we'll go into overtime with a limit of one period or 15 minutes of play. Will Hunt downs it in the end zone. Denver will take over on their own 20 yard line. First down. Denver undefeated at Mile High Stadium last year. If they want to remain that way, they better get something started. Of course, it could be overtime. We're talking about perhaps being tired in the fourth quarter. It'd be more tired if there's a fifth quarter. Rick Peros, nine yards to the 29. Bruce Schultz with the tackle. It'll be second down and one. The big defensive lineman lost him in there. He was so low to the ground that number 75, Robert Hardy, couldn't find him. They're right there. Let's look at him sliding down through there before he's stopped by 58, uh, Bruce Schultz. Picked up nine yards. Excellent first down play. Five minutes left in the game. Second and one. First down to the 40. A gain of 11 yards. Gerald Wilhite. Straight up the middle. Good blocking by the offensive line, and he's flying. Now look at there. He puts both arms around that football, protecting it. He does not want to fumble. Charlie, we're talking about fatigue. The defensive line for the Seattle Seahawks, that front four has played primarily the entire ball game, whereas the defensive three, front three for the Denver Broncos, they alternate every couple series. Seattle could be getting tired. First down at the Denver 40. Egloff in motion. A miss on the pitch out. Picked up the lose yardage. Dave Preston. 37 yard line. Manu Tuyasasopo was there. Loss of three. It'll be second down and 13. Nothing will kill a drive more than something like that. A bobble. Here are two plays they, they ran. Picked up excellent yardage. Try to pitch out, and they had a pretty good wall formed around the right side, too. They may have had good yardage. 342 and counting. Time remaining in the game. We're tied 10 10. Second down, 13. DeBerg. Pass is complete at the 40 yard line. A gain of three. It'll be third down and 10. Rick Peros made the reception. Michael Jackson dropped him right at the 40. Once again, they're looking for their backs. They have not uh, thrown the ball too often to the wide receivers. And now Denver faces a third down, third and ten. We're moving on the three-minute mark, time remaining in the game. There it is. is. 
Steve Watson wide to the near side from the short shot guard. Watson had to come back will not pick up the first down. He had to step back a yard inside of the marker. Key Simpson was with him made the tackle. It'll be fourth down and one. Will Denver gamble here? No, Prestridge is coming in. Number 81 is Steve Watson. We just got through saying that him been throwing to the backs that often. He should have taken a yard or two more. Get a yard or two more downfield. So if he has to come back, he still has the first down. He's looking right at the flag or the yard marker, so he knows how far he had to go. Prestridge will be kicking to Paul John. Prestridge average is 47 yards on seven kicks. Fair catch is called for. It goes out of bounds. And then it kicked back. But they will mark it out right at the 20 yard line. Two minute warning. And now here comes another of those fantastic finishes. may wonder why there is a two minute warning. There are three rule changes that take place the last two minutes of each half. This is to warn the bench to remind them of that. On a kickoff a clock does not start in the last two minutes of each half until the ball is touched in the field of play. A team cannot buy an extra time for a penalty in the last two minutes of a half which they can do at other times. And an offensive fumble on any down only the player fumbling the ball may recover and advance the football. Those are the rule changes. With the exception of what a punt. Uh, of a direct back, snap yeah, right. from a shotgun formation, a punt, or a field goal attempt. Those are the exceptions. You listened to the officials when they were telling us that. Taking notes. That's right. But a lot of people wonder why the two-minute warning, and that's the reason in pro football because of those rule changes. I thought you'd to go over and suck on the oxygen here at Mile High Stadium. <laughs> it is used to that advantage also. Okay, Seattle going to work. 159 left to go in regulation play. Screen. Pass is complete. Sherman Smith. He is out of bounds. Near the 25 yard line, so it'll be second down five. Tom Jackson was there for the defense. Not much on that play, but it did keep the linebackers, might keep the linebackers up close to the line of scrimmage looking for that screen, and perhaps they can get one of their wide receivers behind them. Fisher's going to spot it at the 24 yard line, so it'll be second down and six. We are tied at 10. If we're tied at the end of regulation play, there's three minutes between the start of overtime. There'll be a toss of a coin like at the beginning of the game. Visiting team will call it. Then we'll play to the first score. Each team will have two timeouts. Deep pass is caught. 40 yard line. Paul Johns. Bronco territory. 36 yards on the play. Mike Harden with the tackle. We'll take two looks at it. That had to hurt. Zorn back to throw. Gets the ball to Paul Johns, and he is going to be really hit by Mike Harder, 31. He's up in the air. He's completely defenseless, but he did a great job of holding the football. He comes right back throwing in the pass. This time is complete to Sherman Smith. Clock is moving on the one-minute mark. Very quickly, Seattle keeping their offense going. Second down. 34 yard line. Zorn goes deep. Largent. He's got it. 80 yards on the drive in four plays. He got behind Aaron Kyle. Steve Largent. 34 yards on the touchdown pass from Jim Zorn to Steve Larger. Charlie, I said it a couple of times during the telecast today that Largent is not supposed to be fast. He's not big, but somehow he comes up with a big play. And here it is once again. Zorn looking, throwing deep, great throw right on the money. Look at the concentration by Largent coming up with a touchdown. 49 seconds remaining in this football game. An 80-yard drive and four quick plays. Extra point attempt upcoming. 
Oftentimes, a defensive back, when you don't huddle, is looking for the short pass. It is good. So the Seahawks explode now with 49 seconds left to go. Zorn, 22 of 41, 316 yards, the touchdown pass. And the Seahawks lead it 17 to 10. The Broncos have 49 seconds to come back and tie it. And now let's take a look at the scoreboard. It's gotten awfully quiet here. Final score, Pittsburgh defeating Houston 24 to 10. The Steelers are undefeated. Cincinnati over Philadelphia 18 to 14. Dallas defeating Tampa Bay 14 to 9. Cleveland edge New England 10 to 7. It was the Jets shutting out Baltimore 37 to nothing. Miami edging Buffalo 9 to 7. They're undefeated. Atlanta over the Rams 34 to 17. The Rams have yet to win a game. Chicago defeating Detroit 20 to 17. It's Green Bay over Minnesota 26 to 7. Green Bay's undefeated. And we're back to live action. Will Height and Manning are deep. They'll down it in the end zone. They'll bring the ball out to the 20 yard line. Now, we still have 49 seconds left because the ball was not touched in the field of play. New Orleans defeated Kansas City 27 17. Got a couple of more scores. Fourth quarter action San Francisco ahead of St. Louis 31 13. Washington in the fourth quarter ahead of the Giants 24 17. And of course, here, 17 to 10, Seattle over Denver, 49 seconds remaining. Denver from their own 20 yard line first down. And the Broncos have all three timeouts remaining. And Seattle defense is going to loosen up, give them the short stuff, prevent the big bomb. Pass is complete to Dave Preston. Preston has the first down, and the clock, I believe, will continue. Will they stop it or not? They're going to stop it. Dave Brown was there for the defense. A lot of times in that situation where the ball carrier is pushed back and then out of bounds, the clock continues because they will give him his forward progress. It is a first down. The chains are moved. Seattle is in a position where they can give them all the yardage they want. They can't afford to give them a touchdown. If you look at the defensive backs, we can show them they're going to be 20, 25 yards deep. Let those four defensive linemen tee off on DeBerg. Try to put pressure on him. Screen pass. Will Height. Should have gotten out of bounds. He didn't. Clock is still going. 30 seconds. Now they'll stop it. They'll take one of their timeouts. The line of scrimmage will be the 39-yard line. A pickup of eight. So it'll be second down and two. As DeBerg will come to the sideline to talk with his head coach, Dan Reeves. A chance for us to thank our NBC statistician Steve Dance and our support crew in the booth, Ray Friedman, Al King, and Ron Talpers. Thank you, gentlemen. Excellent job. Always fun to come back. Ray, we've been doing this for 20 some years, but just keep doing it till we get it right. <laughs> 30 seconds left to go in the ball game. I thought we were looking at overtime, but very quickly, Seattle moved 80 yards in four plays. I think the thing about uh, the touchdown pass. They did not line up or get back in the huddle. They lined up, and most of the time, it was a great play by Zorn. Most of the time, you'll see a little quick pass, you know, to stop the clock and maybe pick up the first down. But uh, they tried the bomb, then they took off, and I think maybe defensive backs were looking for the short one. Zorn has completed 22 of 41, 316 yards, the touchdown, his ninth 300 yard game in his career. DeBerg's interception. It is picked off by Kenny Easley. Easley trying to run out the clock. Still on his feet. Easley to the 20. Down at the 15-yard line. Charlie, a couple of times I thought he was going to try to lateral, and that would have been the worst thing in the world for him to do, but I think it was just a good move on Easley's part. That time they were trying to go to Riley Odens, and I think that's the first time in the ball game that they made an effort to throw the ball to the tight end, Riley Odoms. And Bill Bryan, the offensive center, made the tackle that saved a touchdown. And now all the Seahawks have to do is fall on the football. 
12 seconds left to go. Seattle out in front by a score of 17 to 10. 44 yard return by Easley on the interception. I'm sure Zorn is, is, is going to just keep a hold of that football. Don't take any chances on a fumble. And Zorn simply steps back, drops the knee.